Hey everybody, it's James here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Cialdini congruence, or Cialdini congruence, however you pronounce the guy's name. Otherwise known as, why most people's use of Dr. Cialdini's weapons of influence are plain as day and just have zero effect. And surely you've heard of Dr. Cialdini by now. He's the guy that wrote the book Influence, who put the, this whole kind of study of influence on the popular map. Um, and if you don't yet own the book, then for God's sake, buy it, because uh, a lot of what I've been talking about in the principles of distance persuasion are just, they, they are absolutely put on turbocharge when you introduce Dr. Cialdini's weapons of influence, okay? Here's the thing, though. Most people's use of these weapons of influence is just plain as day, has zero effect on the intended prospect. But first, let's just have a quick refresher. Before I get to why that's happening, let's have a quick refresher of those weapons of influence. They are reciprocation, commitment, consistency, scarcity, authority, liking, and social proof. There's also two minor weapons of influence, because and contrast. Now, these are hardwired mechanisms that basically engineer compliance in people. Okay, They're much more likely to engineer compliance in people when they're used. And, and uh, Dr. Caldini has uh, a variety of ways of learning how to use them ethically, because these, this stuff is powerful, very, very powerful. Here's the thing, though. With anything that becomes very, very popular, there, it kind of goes through this tipping point of awareness where most people are suddenly much more conscious of them being used against them, okay? Um, you might think of it that we all have this kind of internal persuasion detector. You think of a lie detector, okay? When you're strapped up to a lie detector, what do they do? Well, the first thing they do is they ask you some really mundane questions like, what's your name? How old are you? Where do you live? What's your mum's name? What was your pet's name? You know, all these just mundane questions. So that, why do they do that? Well, it's so that they can get your baseline for what truth is. They can get a readout for what truth is to you. Because they can only tell if you're lying if they know what the truth is. Okay? And it's kind of similar with those lie detectors with our internal persuasion detectors. See, here's the thing. When any... Body is kind of like out there offering stuff to prospective clients, whether you have a blog or an email list, a newsletter, whatever it is you do, your prospects are picking up your baseline congruence, like who you are is just this congruent person wanting to add value to them. Here's where most people go wrong. When it comes time to start selling, suddenly they start throwing around these weapons of influence to try and get somebody to buy. And what happens? Well, because your prospects already have this readout of your baseline congruence, it starts the, the going off the scale, doesn't it? And they know their internal persuasion detector starts going haywire and they go, hang on, somebody is trying to persuade me. Okay, And it becomes ever so conscious, it loses all effectiveness, and that person who is trying ever so hard to sell fails. And this is why most people uh, are, are very kind of ineffective in their use of the weapons of influence, okay? So how can you use this lesson for today? Because it's a quick one. Well, I want you to think about how you can uh, be firstly aware of your baseline congruence. When it comes time to sell, you, you keep, you maintain your baseline congruence. You don't suddenly start splashing around scarcity and saying there's only X number of places left on your special course or your DVD set or whatever it is you're selling, okay? You don't start just splashing numbers around to try and tweak this kind of uh, this scarcity button in somebody. If you're going to use them, use them from your baseline of congruence. And that means... Whatever you have set up as your baseline congruent communication, you use the weapons of influence congruently with that, okay? So you don't suddenly become this weird car salesperson, okay? Secondhand car salesman, all right? So when you start to operate outside that baseline, here's the bottom line. Your prospects will smell it. They will smell it. So don't operate outside of that baseline of congruence. Know this, that even when you are just giving value to your customers, they are unconsciously getting a readout of what the congruent you is that wants to give value. And when you step outside of that, they're going to go, warning, warning, okay? So use the weapons of influence congruently. So with that in mind, I'm going to put it to the test right now because if you remember a couple of days ago, I spoke to you about how I'm going to be selling something. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about that. And the reason for that is, quite honestly, because I've been getting loads of emails, the comments, people loving the, the material here, and I really appreciate that. So I'm not, I'm still not selling anything today. You can't buy anything today, but I want to tell you a little bit more because I've kind of uh, 
kind of fast tracked some of my plans in light of the uh, popularity of the blog here. Like nearly three thousand people have been viewing, uh, so I really appreciate the support. I fast tracked some of my plans, and uh, I just want to tell you about some of them right now. See, here's the thing. All of this, all of this blog, it's all about persuasion, but persuasion within a very specific context, just like confidence. You can be confident, confident in one context and entirely not confident in another context, can't you? So I've been talking about persuasion within a commercial context, okay, within the context of selling, in commerce, in business, okay? Because here's the thing. And uh, this is really, really important to me, and this forms the kind of the, the fulcrum of everything that I'm doing at the moment and the, the direction that I'm taking my business. Marketing strategy, marketing techniques, you know, business strategy, business techniques, well, they come and go, don't they? And plus, there's an expert around every corner. I mean, there really is, who is more than willing to sell you a thousand pound DVD set or a, you know, a five thousand pound seminar that will teach you. I don't know, the latest things about SEO, the latest things about how to create information products, how to uh, use Google AdWords, how to grow your business just in general. You know, there's always an expert waiting everywhere to teach you these marketing strategies, marketing techniques, business growth tips, all these things. Now, here's the thing. It's almost turned into cliche that not everyone becomes amazingly wealthy as a result of using these things, even though they'll spend stupid amounts of money in order to, do, to learn these techniques and strategies. Is it just because people don't implement the information? Does it just come down to people not using the information? You know, for a long time I thought, yeah, that's it. If somebody doesn't use it, they're not going to get the result. And I still believe that to a large extent. But it's not just that. It's not just that people don't implement. You see... Uh, sorry, there's the next slide that was supposed to be, I don't think so. It's not just that they don't implement. You see, I believe that the foundation of good marketing, good sales, good promotion, good advertising, the foundation of all of those, beyond the techniques and strategies that come and go and change every week and every year, somebody trying to tell you what the next big thing is, that if you don't master, your business is going to fail. The foundation of all of these activities of your business, these money-making activities, the foundation of the money-making of your business is persuasion, isn't it? I mean, think about it. Your ability to persuade your prospects, to persuade somebody to become a prospect, to persuade a prospect to become a customer and to become a raving fan lifelong client of yours comes down to your ability to persuade them. You know, the techniques, the strategies and of, of marketing, of innovation and business growth, these are just the medium for persuasion. I'm going to be launching something called the Distance Persuasion Consortium. And I, like I said, I fast track this, so it's going to be happening relatively soon. I'm not launching this to everybody in the world. I'm launching this to my own in-house list, and I'm letting some of my followers on Twitter know about it. That's it. I'm not letting, well, I'm not getting loads of people to promote this for me. This is a beta test, I'm doing it on a very small scale. Now, there's going to be two membership options. This is going to be a monthly membership program, and. Uh, I'll be telling you more details about it in the upcoming few days. There's going to be white membership and there's going to be black membership. Okay, Because here's the thing. Think about this. If you were just 25% more persuasive, what could that mean to your business? Just 25%. A quarter more persuasive. Would you just do a quarter more business? I don't think so. If you were 25% more effective in attracting leads, if you were 25% more uh, uh, persuasive in turning those leads into customers, in upselling or retaining those customers uh, and turning them into lifelong, you know, raving fans, what would that really mean to your business? What about if you were 50% more persuasive? I mean, what if you were twice as persuasive as you are right now? Really, what would that mean to your business? Well, this is what I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to be taking the best of what I know from well over a decade of working in some of the highest risk direct response marketing environments with some of the biggest brands on the planet. And I'm going to be sharing with you what really persuades people to buy. It's happening on the 18th of May. Okay, so put that date in the diary, the 18th of May. That's coming up real soon. And put this time, 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. That's UK time. And I will be telling you loads more in the next couple of days about this, whilst I'll still give you some more tips and techniques on how to use this stuff. 
Uh, but for now, put that date in the diary, 18th of May, 2009. I'll speak to you soon.